You're watching the first video ever of a spacecraft landing on Mars. The footage is from NASA's Perseverance rover. Uh, it shows the uh, rover traveling through the Martian atmosphere and then landing on the Martian surface. NASA is also showing off some of the rover's video capabilities with a stunning panoramic shot of the red planet. It was composed by 23 onboard cameras. And then there are the microphones which recorded the planet's first sound we've ever heard. It's a Martian breeze. Sounds just like wind noise. And soon Perseverance expected to send back images of Mars, the likes of which we have never seen before because of the two new images located just beneath the masthead. Cameras much more advanced than the ones fitted on the earlier rover Curiosity. An addition which, if nothing else, makes Perseverance look just like everyone's favorite lovesick robot, Wally. Joining us now from Mars Cam Z Mission Control at Arizona State University is Jim Bell, professor in the School of Earth and Space Exploration. Uh, Jim, thanks for being with us. You know, last year we were given a bit of a hint of what we were to expect. Perseverance tweeted out, with the keen eyes I've been given, I'll zoom in on Mars with a clarity like never before. My primary camera, Mars Cam Z, will even let me see details that human eyes can't. Okay. What are we expecting here? What will we see that we've never seen before? Well, we've got these great zoom cameras that can go from wide angle all the way to telephoto. And because there's two of them, like our eyes, they give us stereo, they give us 3D. So we're gonna use these cameras to do a lot of 3D imaging. That'll help the rover drivers guide the vehicle across obstacles and hazards. That helps them put the arm down to drill into rocks and scoop up soil samples. And it helps us scientifically to put the geology together, to put the story of this amazing place on Mars back together. And this is what's kind of fascinating because we've been to Mars you know, a lot of times. I've lost count, you probably know. But eight. Eight times, thank you very much. But we still don't really know for certain, or we've never seen what the Martian sky looks like. What color is the Martian sky? What does the Martian sunset look like? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's interesting because, you know, Mars is a lot like the Earth in some ways, but it's also very different. So on Earth, we've got these beautiful blue skies, the sun sets, the sky turns reddish. On Mars, it's exactly the opposite. The sky in the daytime is typically reddish colored, brownish to red. And as the sun sets, it starts to turn blue. It's because of this fine little dust grains in the atmosphere that are there all the time. You've heard of the famous Mars uh, dust storms. Well, that's what gives Mars its really interesting sky colors. And just explain, because the, the primary mission here for uh, Perseverance is to search for signs of past life. So now you've got these whiz-bang cameras or images that can actually see what the human eye cannot see. How will that actually move that mission forward? Yeah, so we use the cameras for a whole bunch of different things, and especially important is using the cameras to guide the choice of where we go to drill into rocks and to scoop up samples. The rover carries these little sample tubes inside, 43 sample tubes, and they're about the size of a dry erase marker. And when we drill, we'll take a piece of the rock out, we'll put it in the core sample tube, we'll keep it in the rover for a little while, and then we'll set these sample tubes down on the ground uh, in a very obvious place uh, that will be easy to find. And a future mission, uh, sometime in the next decade, a small uh, rover, a lander, a rocket on that lander, an orbiter waiting above will bring those samples back to the Earth. So the, the difference here is that we've never sent a mission out to Mars with the, with the goal of bringing some of that stuff back. This is the first, so that's what makes this mission very special. Yeah, this is sort of a, a two-parter, if you like. This is the start, and um, in about, what, 10, 20 years from now, we'll have you know, those samples brought back. Hopefully 10, 10 years yeah, back to, yeah, yeah, back exactly. to, back to yeah. Earth. Um, I, I guess, you know, the, the question is, um, in terms of uh, you know, the 3D technology, this is actually being used in real time, right? As, as the drivers uh, at Mission Control actually guide the rover around the planet. Well, it's actually used on board by the rover's computer in real time. Okay. The rover has these navigation cameras and our zoom cameras, and it builds a model of the, of the surroundings, kind of like a video game that's going on on board. And so it understands where hazards are. We can flip it into this mode of, hey, auto drive, drive yourself. Go from point A to point B and take a picture when you get there. Let us know. Phone home. Let us know it's going okay. Most of it happens autonomously, John, because it's the rover's so far away. We can't joystick it. It's too far away at the speed of light. Yeah, it's like about 16 minutes or something, 11 minutes between sending a radio signal or something. Uh, That's right. So it'd be, 11, it'd be 11 minutes to send the signal, hey, stop, and then another 11 minutes before we see that you know it's jumped over a cliff or something. 
and very, very quickly, the, the images that you, you will be getting back and the images that you're about to put out, um, where can we see them? Where can everybody just actually get, a, get, a, you know, get an eyeful of this? Yeah, if you just Google NASA Mars rover, raw images, Perseverance rover images, it'll take you to the NASA website, so the Jet Propulsion Lab. It might take you to our Arizona State University website, and you can see all kinds of great How pictures. How important there, is it, though, movies, to put those images out there? What's that? How important is it to get those images out there for everyone to see? Oh, it's absolutely critical. I mean, it's, you know, the taxpayers in the U.S., around the world, other countries involved have put effort into this. We're trying to help educate our kids, excite their teachers, get the general public involved. There's a large number of sort of armchair astronomers and image processors out there who follow along, and, and we want to get those pictures out there for them. Jim Bell, you're doing good work. We thank you for that. Thank you for being with us here on CNN. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Take care.